Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Shri Ayer. This is a special transmission, and joining me is a very special person, Uttar Chakravarti of Hindu Action. But before that, may I request all of you to please like this video, and if you're not already subscribed to our channel, do subscribe to our channel. This is explosive, breaking news. Perhaps the first one to break this thing. Let's welcome Uttar Chakravarti. Uttar Ji, Namaskar. How are you? Namaste. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you, Shri. What's up? Uh, you have some breaking news for us. And finally, finally, you know, about a month and a half ago, when Pannu started saying that the Hindus of Canada should leave voluntarily, self-deport themselves, I had, you know, put out a tweet rather strong. I said, when is the United States hauling a dollar dollar of a certain individual back to the U.S. to stand trial? Nothing happened. But today, the ground seems to have moved just a little bit. Tell us what happened. It seems to have moved just a little bit. Very apt way to describe it, Shri. Uh, so today I came across uh, just uh, literally 20 minutes ago, this article that has appeared on Global Strat View. And uh, obviously you have tweeted about it, uh, Hindu Action. Uh, we have tweeted about the article. It's very new and just came out that uh, the State Department was asked uh, by the Global Strat View. And I, I, that's what the article says. And it's, it's, it came out of D.C. Global strategy is based out of Washington, D.C. Uh, whether uh, it has any position or opinion on the threats that uh, Khalistan cult members are making against members of the Indian community and the Hindu community specifically, and the threats they're making against uh, Air India, uh, you know, especially given the fact that they have a tra track record of uh, blowing up planes, especially the, the largest uh, terror attack in Canadian history. So when the State Department was asked that question, uh, I believe by some journalist, uh, they explained that they are against all form of uh, violence or threat of violence uh, in any form of activism. Uh, so, so this is something that is, I would say, a very positive uh, statement by the State Department. It's long, long, long overdue. And uh, I, 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 we tweeted that, you know, this, this should have been a statement a year ago and there should have been action by now so but you know there is some movement in this direction so that is very uh, very good i hope that uh, these things are are taken more seriously given what's happening around in the world and uh, we know what what khalistan cult members are capable of yeah you, you know one thing that country after country especially in the west does is that you know this guy may be a terrorist but we know how to handle him this undying optimism about their ability to handle somebody who is, you know, a little bit kind of satke <laughs> it's how you call it in, in Mumbai uh, Bhasha, that, you know, somebody who's, who doesn't really think in his Punglish comes out and starts making this statement. You know, I feel like laughing Utsa, more than anything else. Are, people are not taking you seriously, man. You can't do all this stuff. And anyway, but having said whatever you said, you are actually getting a, a bunch of people excited. I see the same set of people getting excited in San Francisco, another set in Washington, D.C., another set in New York. I think, if if anything, this Hamas experience should teach United States that, look, these kinds of things need to be nipped in the bud. You yeah. cannot try to control another country by trying to allow a secessionary group to start putting down. Do you think U.S. will keep quiet if there is somebody who comes and says that I want, what is that guy's name? David Duke or something like that. Some some extremist group in U.S., they take shelter in India and they start sending out statements. These guys won't even tell India. They'll just come in and blast the guy out, right? That's exactly what they did in uh, with Osama bin Laden. And uh, that was the right thing to do. That's exactly what they did with uh, ISIS, uh, ISIS uh, Amir. So, that's the right thing to do. And the fact that uh, these Khalistan cult members can come out online and keep on making threats with both Canada and America knowing fully well what they had done in the 1980s and 90s and what they are continuing to do even today. Uh, it's, it's appalling. It's concerning. Uh, I also believe it's partially because as a, we as a community and, and the average American knows so little about this that once they get to know about the real threat that these people pose, I think there will be more action and there will be more pressure for action on, on these administrations. I think in Canada, it is beginning to happen. I think 
uh, what Justin Trudeau has been going through after his infamous, uh, you know, uh, accusations that he made. I think he's having he's having the worst nightmares <laughs> since then, and I think he also realizes that he's in deep soup. So, I think America America is also beginning to realize that, and the State Department statement is very welcome. I would say. Um, that is true. It's a good first step, but we yeah. need to see some more tangible action. Let's absolutely. move. A l- I'm um, sorry. Go ahead and finish it. No, no, no. I absolutely. Another... I, I just said absolutely. I agree with you. Agree so, with you. so I have a, a small. Uh, you know, I wanted to read the tea leaves a little bit. Uh, uh, the midterm elections. The Democrats seem to claim that they have won big. Then there was this uh, debate of Republican candidate. I didn't see the whole thing. Just summarize to us how you see the 2024 election shaping up, given that whatever you see. So what I say may sound a little, uh, you know, out of the way and a little controversial, but I'm going to go ahead and say it still. So I do believe that the midterms, the Democrats uh, have done better than most people expected them to do. And part of the part of the reason why they did better is because of the abortion issue. I think urban America has more or less moved towards pro-choice as a default position and because of that in areas where there is you know urban voting including in uh, red states uh, the pro choice voter made a big difference uh, against the republicans and and i think that that played some role in in getting the slightly more favorable democratic uh, democrat results than most people thought given the disaster that the current administration is uh, going through one after the other so so i think that is one one reason why they did decently well now as for the uh, debates are concerned i think there is because america is moving into two two major wars and you know there used to be joke in the early 2000s uh, that at any given point of time america can only fight two and a half wars uh you know and at this point america is already fighting those two and a half wars one in the middle east one in eastern europe and half a war if not more in in the indo pacific uh, which is not yet a full full scale war but there is movements in that direction so i think america is up to its neck and more in in global uh, geopolitical uh, war like situation and because of that i believe that the establishment has regained power and when i say establishment i mean the establishment in both the parties uh there was a time 5 months ago for 4 months ago when people like vivek ramaswamy uh, were zooming ahead because they were out of the box they are out of the box thinkers they are uh, against the status quo and they may they resonated very well and they continue to do in to some extent they do resonate very well but as of now as i see it uh, because of especially what happened in the middle east i think there is there's more and more movement towards the the establishment regaining back its narratives regaining back its uh, uh, talking points so i think that uh, that is going to bring up forth in the results you know if it continues this direction then there is going to from both the parties the establishment is going to gain more power i would believe that that will not be good for trump but there is also one good sign that that i saw in a poll recently in among students who are below the age of 35 i believe that was poll Uh, in urban areas in university uh, folks there is a lot of support for trump when it comes to foreign policy when it comes to national security and when it comes to dealing with uh, the ability to fight uh, in the border issue the southern border uh, literally non existing at this point uh, and those things don't bode well for the democrats uh, they are going to really hit the democrats badly so the democrats have the abortion issue that they have kind of cornered that will help them but there are really serious other issues like national security border southern border and and the economy overall that that will not help the democrats uh, utsav i'm going to ask you a you know question that might sound counterintuitive by voting against republicans they can't change the law i mean the supreme court is still the supreme court the bench composition is not going to change unless somebody chooses to retire i mean they are for life Correct. so uh the, but, the, my point is why are they trying to take it out on the republican when it is the supreme court that that did it that did it so it's a million dollar question i think most people do not think that far uh 
90 percent of the people vote through emotions and i can say like everybody i speak to especially you know i i i i don't i don't have the right to speak on behalf of women on this issue but what i have seen most women talk about especially in urban america it's 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 all about pro uh, pro choice so so that's that's the challenge we face but by the way personally i am an independent and i am for the mother to choose what she wants correct, to do correct, correct. and and i've been I mean, in fact the day the judgment came the first question i asked was doesn't the supreme court have anything better to do i thought the law was settled on this one why yeah. go back and undo it that was my question so it's not like i'm trying to say this thing today which is also so, the reason why the voting is so so pro democrat because it the democrats feel that it was the supreme court and its new judges uh, especially the judges that were appointed under trump that skewed this tilt against the decision and they are trying to take revenge from the republicans for that purpose but it's a if they were trump appointees they could have leaned towards trump in the 2020 election also right the, of course <laughs> that's a conversation <laughs> you know it's water down the river i i don't know how how we can get back to that conversation you know it's a i i just let go of that conversation <laughs> you know there was a yeah, time I'm, when I'm... trump was a president and there were hillary supporters who were like this election is stolen russia gave trump the uh, the presidency i'm like I don't even want to discuss it. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> so I just move on. <laughs> so la last question for you uh, again politics. So um, recently I read that in nine states the number of people who call themselves independent is more than both parties and in there are some states where it is both parties combined it's uh, it's less than the independent. And it is expected that this number 9 is going to grow up to 20 come 2024 November. and and they said that independents are not only uh, you know choosing i mean they they are deserting as a registered democrat or a registered republican but they are also choosing to come and vote many people used to think that in an independent is like you know this is all bad i'm not going to vote they are not saying home either given that there is a possibility that 20 states might be actually independent majority people used to think i mean let me phrase the question this way people used to think the swing vote was less than 15% but if independents are the majority chunk in 20 states don't you think this theory that six states will decide the election might not hold good might not hold good and i will also go ahead and say that it will actually help the republicans because how so because i think most of the independents that i have spoken to are closet or or leaning republicans they just don't say it because in especially in areas which are very blue areas which is you know urban america or even suburban america but non rural america there is such a strong culture of uh, quote unquote wokeism that even if you mention that you like even one thing about the republicans you know by mistake in a in a conversation people will shun you it was like that since the time trump ran and i think that has that has led to many people declaring themselves to be independents who are probably slightly skewed towards republican but just don't want to talk about it and i think the outcomes of the current turmoil in eastern europe and middle east will be very like i do see a big shift in the muslim vote uh, many of them not just going to vote because they are just so upset at biden uh, for having supported israel because they almost thought that they own biden literally <laughs> so how <laughs> dare biden even say something in favor of israel because that's what that's how the climate had become in the, in dc at one point so it's going to be interesting in the next year yes indeed it's going to be very interesting um, viewers we just decided to do this surprise thing because finally something happened you know uh, i always wonder you know i put out all these tweets hmm, is somebody reading my tweets is somebody going to act on it because you know i'm very disappointed with the fact that on july 1st or july 2nd if i remember correctly the consulate of india in san francisco was set on fire and till today not a single person has been caught yeah, yeah. and 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 this is not this is not uh, you know uh, this is not incompetence this is deliberately somebody doesn't want to move on it either that or the people that have been apprehended have been treated as something else anyway i'll leave it no, at that not, not just that i would even go ahead and say that the khalistani groups actually in the last month especially since trudeau made those crazy remarks 
they actually went on the offensive going around and talking to mem- important people in in dc and around the country that it's they who are under threat from 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 the quote unquote the indians or or the hindus however they they put it so i actually heard from many senior uh, you know i won't name names here but people who make a difference in in hot leadership in washington dc they were like oh the sikhs are calling us and saying that they are under threat i'm like and they they don't know the who is a khalistani and who is a sikh right to them they, they just think everybody is a sikh i mean i i try to always say that you know khalistanis are not really sikhs they, they, their ideology is so skewed from what actual sikhism stands for uh, but that's important for us to understand that there is a constant effort by these elements to kind of play the victim even though they are the ones threatening to blow up planes and they are the ones who actually blew up planes and they are the ones who you know continue to threaten people from indian origin to leave Bangla- uh, leave uh, canada and uh, and, and uh, america yes indeed and and thank you so much so it's late in the night for you it's getting to there for me also and viewers please like share and subscribe to our channel are there any questions uh, maybe there's one question let me see uh, why isn't he in jail <laughs> and namaskar ashali ji he is <laughs> a good friend of mine go ahead well ashali ji the reason pannu is not in jail is because uh, people are not actually looking at all the things that he is saying and doing uh, i do believe that there are other khalistanis in america who should be in jail before pannu and that tells a lot about the kind of people who are who are in canada and america who are living here uh, it's a good question i think it's a campaign that needs to be taken up and and i hopefully the law enforcement in in dc in in the fbi and the homeland security they are they take this seriously i hope so and uh, patthar tosser wants to know why pannu makes hate speeches while canada us never arrest him same question same answer i guess <laughs> it's it's see they in these countries if pannu was somebody else uh you know if it was a any other person i would i would think there would have been more more uh, action taken i think there is a we just have to be more aggressive in terms of educating I, I, people I, I, i hinted that and i don't want to you know yeah. say what i am thinking it's it's okay but people who know understand what i am trying to say look we are law abiding citizens we want the law and we pay our taxes we hope that as a taxpayer we have discharged we think that we have discharged our obligations we're just merely asking you to discharge yours um by the way a lot of a lot of things are coming out there was a primary in uh, this is the last thing i mean we'll wind up La- primary in connecticut where the judge has set aside the democratic primary did you notice that i i, I missed stuffing. that one i missed that one ballot stuffing and yeah? ballot stuffing oh wow <laughs> yeah I, i have a video i'll send you the link on that one and and also more uh, videos coming out of uh, minnesota that hmm. ballot stuffing happened uh, in elano elano mars constituency i can see th- i can i can see that happening i mean uh, elano mar is a, i think they we can actually have a whole conversation on rashida and elan <laughs> <laughs> and the things they are they are getting away with i mean i'm i'm glad that rashida got cens- censured by the us congress but the things they are getting away with i mean i i had so many people call me after the rally that the quote unquote pro palestinian side did in in the white house in front of the white house i can tell you if it was any other community doing that rally people would have been shot by the white house secret service uh, guards they were literally inside the white house and screaming and threatening but they were you know they were not uh, contained properly Yes, indeed, and and thank you once again, Utsav. Uh, last question. Shorts wants to know if Republicans get elected, it's going to be Biden triumphs three in favor of Israel. <laughs> Turquoise covering eyes. <laughs> you know, it, it even Biden has supported Israel. Let me be clear. I mean, Biden has. We have to give give the credit where it's due. Biden has supported Israel. Uh, it is a big section within the Democrat that they are that Biden is concerned about at this point. because the level of influence that muslim brotherhood and jamaat e islami has in the democratic party by this time is worrying people like biden and uh, and anthony blinken and and uh, jake uh, jake sullivan uh, that's the level they are themselves concerned and they that's why you saw the vote against rashida talib 22 democrats voted against her so 
it's a serious situation. I mean, I counted how many of them were Jewish, and I think 20 of them were. I could be wrong about the other two. They could so, also be Jewish. So, you know, I, I'll tell you one, one minute. I had a conversation with, uh, and actually I have a video, we can do a show on this, with Congressman uh, David Trone, who is running for the Senate in Maryland. And Congressman David Trone, for those of your listeners who follow what was happening, was one of the most vocal anti-India person, Congress members, in 2019, when the, the Kashmir uh, Article 370 was removed, he went on and on and on against India on, on Jammu and Kashmir. And so I, I met him at a recent event and uh, we, we ex I exchanged a lot of things uh, with him. And I told him that, uh, Congressman, do you know that 100% of the people who you spoke for on behalf of all this time you were in the Foreign Affairs Committee are actually supporting Hamas? Because Congressman Trone, who otherwise supports Jamaat Islami on every other issue, because he is Jewish and because he's sane, I hope, is actually supporting Israel and it doesn't support the ceasefire. And he said that very out loud. And I said, you know, you got to go back and look at your own uh, supporters because those who you spoke for are all in favor of Hamas. And he kind of like, you know, he, he kind of agreed that he he, he made <laughs> mistakes. <so. laughs> actually, congressmen and women are fairly accessible. I mean, you need to break a little bit of a barrier, but once that happens, they, they'll, they'll talk to you as one-on-one. -on -one. Like, so senators are always scared of. We should engage uh, them with facts. They represent us. Uh, yes. you know, they, they, that's why it's important for us. You know, One note I will make an American Hindu community should stop doing is to run around and take pictures with members of Congress. Yes, so yes. That's not why you donate money to them to take pictures. You need to ask them questions. Yeah, get and 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 make sure that the video that you are running to record that actually is recording. I did one with Rokhana without <laughs> pressing the record button. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so, meant. Anyway. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Then afterwards, we made up. We had an actual sit down interview, and that went off very well. So thank you so much, Utsav. It was always it's always fun to talk to you because this is more of a gyan. At the same time, there's a tinge of humor in this. And, and you know, U.S. is what U.S. is. And uh, thanks once again. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaste. Good night, everybody.